Okay, so I wanted to make a video about tablet weaving for absolute dummies. This is a video that I wished had existed when I was trying to grasp this um, method of uh, making bands, I suppose. Uh, because I uh, purchased a book about it. This one, you see here. Literally, uh, it was. It took me uh, almost two years to figure out how to do it. Uh, and I must admit, this book is really nice for patterns and such. Uh, it has some really nice patterns that are easy to follow when you know how it works. But just having this book to do tablet weaving, to learn it from, from the very beginning, well, Maybe it works for other people who are better at understanding this, but it did not work for me. I had to rely on um, finding things on the internet and I was able to piece it together in the end, but I want to try and make a more comprehensive video. So on with it. Um, in the beginning, I want to just introduce you to how the thing is set up, because that is what took me the longest to figure out. So I'm just going to move you. This is not a very good setup, but it's what it is. Uh, of course, you have the tablets here. I purchased these four of them in wood. And I just made the rest myself from cardboard. It's preferable to have them all in some sort of more solid material because the cardboard ones, they bend easily at the corners. But uh, this is very easy to do with cardboard if you are new to it and just want to figure out if you like it don't go out and purchase a lot of these uh, this is very thin band i'm making you see here and i am using 11 tablets so you do need quite a lot if you want to make thicker bands uh, you see i have written some um, what are they called? Oh my god, now I can't talk English. I have uh, some letters <laughs> that are called, they're called letters. Uh, here, and that, it, that has a purpose uh, because you can follow, you, when you turn the tablets, you, when you make the, uh, the band, you turn the tablets. So you will be able to see how far, where you are in the pattern. Uh, you will be able to keep track of, um, because you always start with the A in this position. I have the, the needle here to keep them in the same place while I'm not working with them. You always start with the A in this place. And so as you turn them, you can calculate how where you are in the pattern. And uh, I've written that on all the tablets. Not all of them are in the same position, but I will explain that later because I'm in the middle of making the band. You see, so it's very important that you write the, the letters A, B, C, D in this order because that is the most common way to do it, to be able to follow uh, the patterns that are out there in books and on the internet. So these are the tablets, of course. I have fastened the threads here. This is not necessarily the best setup, this is just uh, from Ikea, you know, the ones you can use for your lunch bags and just the belts I have. I In the beginning I had the, it fastened here. It's a bit more difficult to keep it even here, so as soon as I had enough band here to be able to do this, I moved it. it this is easier than tying it around the belt, I find, because if you tie it, you, can't, you don't have the same flexibility. Oh, can you even hear me? <laughs> this is better. This setup is better than uh, tying it, so just tying the threads around the belt. Because you don't, because if you just tie it, you don't have the same flexibility. With this setup, I can easily move it. Uh, the more I make, I will move this. I will undo this, and I will move it so, so I don't have to uh, sit hunched over with my back and ruin my back. So that is easier. Fortunately, I don't have a good setup for the end that is just tied around to my radiator, to my heater. I need to find a better setup for that, but you can do the same thing 
or to a chair that doesn't move, but it's just important that you have it tied very securely um, so to a place that does not move, because if it moves, it's going to be a hell of a struggle. When I set it up, I begin by um, putting in all the threads. Um, you have to look at the patterns to see if they will go from the if they will go in from the back so they go this way or if they go in let's see if I can find an example if they go in oh no <laughs> oh there's one if they go in from the front let me show you here they go in from the front you see this flat is goes out so they go in from the front so they go this way this is very important from when you set up the the weaving weaving process. Um, so yeah, I start by this. That easily takes the longest time when they're doing tablet weaving, setting up the whole process. Uh, so it's very important that you keep the the yarn not twisted. It has to be in order. So when I set it up, I usually I just put all in all the... Okay, so I did drop my camera there, but what I meant to say was that um, it's very important that the yarn doesn't get tangled when you set it up because it has to be in the same order for when you weave it, um, otherwise the viewing process uh, gets very messy and tangled and it's just gonna be a one big knot. Uh, so I would do one uh, card at a time and then then uh, place them very neatly on top of each other in the right order and uh, then when I'm done with it I would fasten them at the belt of course and then I would brush through the uh, yarn with my fingers or sometimes with a comb to ensure that they are um, all smooth and they are they are not tangled and it's all in the in the right order hopefully that makes sense Okay, hello. It's now the next day. I was uh, interrupted, um, but I kept the same music in the background, so I, I am considerate of you. Um, but well, as I was explaining uh, how these tablets work when you um, set them up, that process takes almost as long as just weaving the whole band. Um, so how you do it? When I do it in the beginning, you have, let's say, these are some yarn. These are four pieces of, pieces of yarn. You need four pieces of yarn for each um, uh, card, uh, the tablet, uh, because there are four holes and there needs to go a piece of yarn in each hole. Um, so let's say this is uh, one meter long. Um, this is just a small yarn to demonstrate, but let's say they are one meter long. So I take the short end, the end, the the short end that's gonna be towards you. Um, that's gonna be uh, fastened to uh, the belt. And here is a spare card. So let's say the pattern says I will explain the pattern afterwards. So let's say the pattern says that the pink should go in A and B from uh, the front so it go so it will sit like this as I explained uh, earlier so you just take the short end let's keep it in frame okay come on and so the the gray should go in D and C so still keeping it together, just putting it through the hole here. There's one through and there is one through. I find that this doing it, if you do it four at a time like this, it goes much faster. You can of course take one piece of yarn at a time to do it, but I find that it gets tangled in the, in the setting up process much easier and it also takes a lot longer. So now you have it here and you always want the this letter side facing to the right and you take the long end of the yarn, stretch it out and the short end you 
I would take this one, a new one, and fasten it around here. And then gradually, as you have set up more and more tablets, you all the yarn of the end, the short end, put it in the this thing, the fastener, whatever it's called, just to keep it together as you go. And the yarn, lay it out either across the, the floor or across your lap, also together. Um, and of course, you follow the pattern to see which uh, order the the tablet should be in. I want to show you what the different parts are called because sometimes that can make it easier to uh, weave. Of course, these are called the cards or the tablets. Um, this here, what was it called? Uh, I read up on this yesterday. But of course, it is called the weft. Like, I think this is something that all people who weave also in other ways, they all know. But I didn't know because I don't have any experience with uh, weaving. So this is called the weft thread. And this here is called the warp thread. This is the thread that goes in and out. I will just move it here. I, want, I will show you. Uh, in a bit when I want to show you how I weave um, but this is called the, the warp thread and uh, it's just a long piece of thread it should preferably be a bit thinner than this here because so the the design on the band will not be stretched out um, and I just have it wrapped around a piece of cardboard um, but you can get a shuttle that is made of wood, that is also much nicer. This is basically the economy setup. <laughs> um, so when you weave, I'm just going to remove this pin. So now I'm going to, first I'm going to show you the basic motions, then I'm going to explain the pattern, and then I'm going to explain how you follow the pattern. So you of course you take the the thread here and you pull it through but not all the way. Leave a little bit out here. I need to move you. And then you move the cards according to the pattern. Um, it's very important that you keep it organized, that you uh, are sure that they only make one turn. According to how it should go and then you move it all in one place I like to go back and forth a bit because that makes room here and then I push then I push the the warp thread down and then I pull it carefully it has to not break it because this is a pretty thin thread uh, it breaks pretty easily and then I just do it again Go in and leave out some, make the move. The most simple patterns, you only move it a quarter turn, like this. But some patterns, they also have where you turn like um, a half turn, that's where you turn it two sides. And I suppose there are also other patterns with more advanced. But in the most basic patterns, you just turn it a quarter of the, of the square. Then push it down. I use my finger. There are probably other methods out there. And I pu pull it so it should... And you see it will look like this. The warp thread, the color will show because it's lighter than the main thread I'm using. So... And the way that you uh, see where you are in the pattern so this pattern here as i showed you before the letters are for each hole so this color will correspond to so you need to put for example red in all the letters here of course but if you take this thread here you will need to put red in a 
and B. And you will need to put the dark color in C and D. And you can also see here in the bottom, they actually write how many tablets you need. That's really nice. But you can also see if this should go this way or this way when you weave. So for example, as I showed you, when it goes this way, the yarn goes in from the back. And when it goes this way, the yarn goes in from the front. And you can also see here on the pattern, it shows, this is a very basic uh, pattern, but it says here is the beginning from this line. So you make, this means forward turn and this means backwards turn. So you turn it forward three times, and then you turn it backwards three times as to make um, the pattern. And these out here, they are just the side ones. So of course you don't need to uh, turn them because they are the solid color all the way. But it will get twisted, uh, the, um, the border yarn, when you twist it only the same way. So of course the yarn in the other end, they will twist. That's just how yarn works. So t sometimes you need to twist it um, back. If you just keep turning it like this, it will become uneven on the sides. So I would say in the beginning, just always turn the side, the border yarn this, uh, forward. Just keep doing forward turns until you can see that it's um, very twisted up in the end where you fasten the yarn to, for example, the radiator. Then you start doing the border yarn in the backward turns. That's, that's the only way to do it. There is unfortunately no uh, smart trick to it. So now I will show you. So I can see, you can see the pattern also. Good. I can see if I pull apart the cards, I can see that my A is here. And so that means that I have made two turns because the first turn, these are forward turns I'm doing right now. The first turn moved the A to here. And then the next turn made it here. So I have one forward turn left. So I will do that. And because I'm doing the backward turn with the, the borders right now, that's what I, that's why it's not all doing the forward turn. Um, so first I'm turning them backwards. And here, in this side it's two border yarn, and this side it's three. This confused me in the beginning because most of the time the, the patterns have the equal uh, number of uh, border yarn. So, and then, so these are turned backwards, and now I turn this portion forward. Okay, I'm continuing with the, the backward turns. So these ones, of course, go forward. And the, the middle part goes backwards. And if you become lost, the way you can tell where you are is... I knew before that I had to do backward turns because the A... Now it's here, but it was here before. So that meant I had gone from A a, a here, you know, three forward turns. So I would know that I had to do three backwards turns. If you come, if you become lost here, you can just see where are you in the pattern. You can see you are in the middle of a diamond. If you are in the beginning of a diamond, you have to do forward turns. If you are in the middle, you have to do backward turns.
So now I can see that I have to do four turns again because the diamond has ended. The pattern is done. And I can see that the A is now back in position in the corner, in the upper corner that is nearest to me. So this means I will just repeat the whole thing. So yeah, I think I have told you everything that you need to know now. Otherwise, of course, just send me a question. Um, again, I want to clarify that I am not an absolute expert at this. I made this for my um, past self who was struggling very much with their how to, to learn this technique because it honestly, if you don't really have a grasp of how to do weaving, this can be very difficult to understand. At least that's what I experienced. Um, so I hope you have a good time with it um, and that it won't be too frustrating. It's really fun to to do it once you've once you've learned it. You can make some really nice patterns. Goodbye for now.